Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is the second part of the Getting to Blinky video series here. And this is going to be about creating schematic symbols and how to do that kind of thing. But before we do that, we need to actually kind of look at a couple things in terms of what we're actually going to be building. So let's go ahead and do that. First off, this is the site that uh, this is all based on Contextual Electronics. Uh, you can see the courses here, specifically uh, the KiCad course. Uh, you can see we're kind of working through here, with the getting to Blinky, uh, part one, part two, and kind of how it all fits in, in here. We're actually in part two, which is kind of the same as the, sch the schematic symbols. Uh, so let's look at what we're actually going to be building. We're going to want to, we want to build a flashing LED circuit. A great way to do that is the 555 timer. Uh, <coughs> we want to do this slightly different simply because we want uh, to be able to use a lower voltage. You see here it's a 9 volt battery. We'd like to be able to use down to, uh, you know, a battery, or a smaller battery, like a CR2032 coin cell battery. And so what we'll do instead is we'll actually use the 7555, the CMOS version of the original 555 timer. And that allows us to do the, just that. So you can see it's in Ape's A stable mode. Uh, we're not going to go through any of the the basics behind you know how the the 555 works just because there's so many great resources online um, you know Forrest Mims old books are great for that kind of thing and uh, I personally ran a contest called the 555 contest back in 2011 so there's tons of different ways to learn about the 555 the main thing though is that we're going to actually be building this so let's keep we'll keep this around. Um, but the one thing we will see is that we're going to have to actually create a schematic symbol. And so that's nice from the perspective of needing to build stuff here. So this is the uh, the getting to Blinky project that we started in the part one video. Let's open up eSchema. And then the first thing we're going to do is uh, actually try and, and look through the, the default libraries here. Uh, not because we, oh, let's do that again there. So if we hit A, that loads up uh, component selections, actually trying to drop something there. Or you can click over here, and, and well, we could just do that. So if you click on this tool, and then click once, it pulls up that same menu. I like hitting A because it's nice and fast. But we're going to actually look through all of the different libraries here. So you can see these are actually the default KiCad libraries. Um, it adds in a cached library for the project we're doing here. Uh, but the main place, like all of the passives, are actually in the, the device library. So th some of the naming on the libraries is a little counterintuitive. But let's just look through real quick just to see what's in here. So we see there's a capacitor, there is a resistor, and yeah, that's about all we need here. Now the other thing that we can do is that because we're doing a, a quite simple flashing LED circuit, we can uh, we can actually replace some of these because this actually determines some of the, th the threshold uh, of the circuit. And basically, if we change out the values here, we can actually change when and how often this thing blinks. So uh, we can do that with a variable resistor based on light, so a light dependent resistor or LDR. Uh, so we're going to throw one of those in there as well and actually be able to change up how the circuit blinks based on how much light it receives. So that's easy to find. Uh, we can look in here again. Oh, we're going to need a battery as well, so that's important. Um, let's see. I think there is a light dependent resistor. Da, da, da. Hmm, where did that go? Well, for this, we can just use the uh, variable resistor, which is VR here. All right, uh, so what else do we need? We also need, obviously, the 555 timer, or the 7555, as it were. So we'll start by creating that now, and then we're going to, in the next video, we'll actually start dropping in all those components and wiring up the diagram like we need it. However, the 7555 is not in there yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is the component library editor, and this is where we create schematic symbols. 
first thing we need to do is make sure we're in the right working library. Um, we're in device library, but what we're going to do here is actually take this. Um, well, first off, you you can hit OK to go into the library, and then if you want to load up a, a component like the capacitor there, or perhaps a resistor, hit OK there, list all, and then select resistor, and now this is available for editing. Since we're in the device library and we don't want to necessarily modify the device library because that's a default library, what we're going to do is take this resistor and then copy it to a new library. What we're going to do is call this GTB. There we go. Now that created a new library with just a resistor in it, but if we want to actually have it available in the um, in the schematic, then we need to first go to preferences, then library, and then add. We go to our location, C, getting to Blinky, and there it is. And if you look in here, we see there's GTB. All right, and now if we once again hit A, which is what allows us to drop a component, we can go to the GTB library, which should now be showing here. There it is. And then we see there's a resistor in there. All right, we can drop it there. Now if we want to actually add the 7555 like we've been using, we go back in the library editor, double check the library we're in, we're in the correct library, and then we hit new component here. And we'll name this 7555. The reference is what it will be for the, um, if you have multiple in a circuit, you'll have U1, U2, U3, or this could, you know, you could change this to whatever you'd like it to be. You could be, um, you know, TU timer unit 7555, or rather TU1, TU2, that kind of thing. Parts per package is uh, we're going to have just one, and then we're going to leave all these others as the default. All right, now we can start moving stuff around. I'm going to zoom out here. We're going to grab the field value. Oh, we'll put that up top. The reference designator, we'll move that to the bottom. Now we're going to, uh, well, let's do a split screen here. And we'll do the same. Minimize this. Oh, that moved it all down. Sorry. We need the flashing window. There we go. Let's zoom in on that. And then we can actually match the same kind of pinout here. But the other thing we want to do is match the naming. So let's go to the wiki page the 555 timer, make sure we match the pinout name just for making sure it's similar. So ground, trigger, output, uh, reset, power, discharge, threshold, and voltage control. All right. So first off, let's create all the pins and then we can refactor them to look like that other page. So we hit pins up here, say ground, pin 1, and out to the right. Now it says to the right because the name's to the right, whereas the actual connection point's on here on the left. Trigger, 2, out, 3, reset, 4, make sure we're going to change that, put a little tilde in front for the that actually gives it that bar at the top. VCC. Well, actually, let's do the control first. Five. And then we're going to switch that down to the left. All right, that goes down here. Five, six is threshold. You can see it actually saves the pin type, the uh, input versus output, the left right orientation. Uh, saves all that stuff. All right. You can see also that um, uh, there's a grid here that we can actually adjust. We're going to keep it at the size it is currently, but uh, we could adjust that if we wanted to. 
you see that it snaps to the grid there. We right click, we can actually go to grid select. We could change it, but we like it at the biggest grid because that ensures that we'll get a steady connection there. Okay. All right, so we have all our pins. That's good. We can move this around by hitting M over top of the component. Move here. Now we could just create a box around this, but instead what we're going to do is actually match this one because this kind of shows a easier way to do things. Move this again. Do a little refactoring. Rotate. Move up four. Three is output. Uh, let's see, how can we get this to go? Well, one's on the bottom. Five's on the bottom. Oops. Move to grab. Six is on the left side. And seven is on the left side. Three is over here. And where's two is below there. Okay. So we can refactor this. It's not going to look necessarily, it doesn't have to look like a part. We leave the footprint for later. This is just for an easy hookup of, of all the pins and everything. Right. And making sure you can actually read this stuff as well. If we select a group by clicking and dragging, we can actually move the group at once. We could also take the group, right click, and then do all these different actions here, like mirroring. You can mirror across the Y, or mirror back. <coughs> all right, move this down. Move this, uh, move this over. And we're just about good there. Now the next step is to actually draw a box around this. It's kind of up to you how you want to actually show it. We'll leave the pins actually on the outside like that. You could also, you know, move the box a little bit further out. And let's move this one over a little bit as well. And we'll put this right in the middle. I get a little bit neurotic about uh, the looks. All right, there we go. So we have a 7555 part. Now what we do is we save the entire library, which is that GTB library. Include the last component change, modify, and we should be good to go. We can close this for now. We can minimize this, and then we can open up the schematic editor. Possibly. All right, and then we'll, we're back in the schematic editor. We can remove this one by mousing over, hitting delete, and then hit A, list all, go into the library we just modified, and there's our part. All right, so not super fast, but not too slow either. And then we can uh, we can actually drop these. We can copy them. We can create multiples if we wanted to, or we can delete the ones that we have here and move them all around. We can also right click. Select the component and then have a contextual menu here. Um, we can change the footprint, we can edit it directly, we can orient it. Or really, like I said, I like really being able to modify things just with the hotkeys. So you mouse over it, hit a hotkey, it gives you a bunch of different options here. All right, well, that's all for creating schematic symbols. You can do simpler ones, you can do more difficult ones, but right now we have a 755 and we're ready to go.